Well, God's grace and his mercy and his peace are yours through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray he opens our hearts and minds as we hear his word for today. That word is from our gospel reading, which really is in two parts. And it comes up every year this way, every three years, I mean, in the same manner. The first nine verses, Jesus tells the parable. Then we skip to verse 18, where Jesus explains the parable. There's two very different messages in those two, but we're going to bring them together today. Please be seated. That's our text. Yeah, Pastor, I don't know what to do with this microphone, and we are so confused. (laughs) You know, if nothing else, this pandemic has taken us all out of rhythm, hasn't it? And, uh, but it also brings great thanksgiving for the gifts that we have and the new gifts that we have here in the sanctuary that we will be having with new lights. We already have a a whole new soundboard, a new camera system, a new way to share God's word. And what a glorious gift that part of it has been that we're reaching people on a regular basis now that we never reached before. Also, Todd, in in case I begin cutting out, let's go to this microphone too, which I've kept. We're good? All right, excellent. So those are the blessings that we have in this, this kind of feeling where we seem to, I don't know, not find our feet exactly. But yet God is at work, as he always is, scattering those seeds. So yes, two halves. Two halves in Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9. Jesus tells the story. He tells the story of this really crazy farmer. Because how many of you, when you've gone out into the country, or maybe you were raised on a farm, and you know much better than I do, how carefully you want to place the seed in the soil that you've carefully prepared to receive it. That's definitely the case in the time of Jesus as well. And seed was not cheap. Seed wasn't something that you just scattered haphazardly. But yet Jesus tells a story. You can imagine the reaction of the people who were listening. Absolute unbelief. This farmer's walking around near a path, near rocks, near a place where thorns grow, and just throwing the seed all over the place. So when Jesus describes what happens, everyone says, well, yeah, that's exactly what would happen. Why in the world would a farmer be so dumb to throw his seed in a place where there's no chance that it's going to grow? But you know, if you think of the true story about it, which is really the story of the kingdom of God, where he shares his grace with everyone, For God so loved the world, right? For God desires all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth in 1 Timothy chapter 2. And so if God desires all to be saved, then this story is one of the grace of God's kingdom, that Jesus comes into the world by God's command, the Father, through the Holy Spirit, sharing this love, this grace, this forgiveness to anything and everyone, just covering the world with his grace, with the story of his love for each one of us. And where it falls, it falls. Because there is enough. And that's the word I want you to take home today. Enough. There is enough grace. More than enough grace to cover the world a billion times over. So picture Jesus just walking through the world, not considering the condition of the hearts who are receiving this love and this grace, this hope, this peace, but just throwing it everywhere, knowing that when he comes around again, the basket is still going to be full. That's the first half of the story. But then, jump a few verses, jump about nine verses actually, where Jesus is now in a different place explaining the parable to his disciples. And we don't even hear about the God's, of God's kingdom or God's grace anymore. Now we're hearing all about the receiving end. Now we're hearing all about the soil that is accepting those seeds. The rocky ground where roots sprout, but then they don't really take hold, and those plants will wither away. The hard-packed path where the seeds never have a chance because birds come and take them away as soon as the sower is passed. Or the place where thorns are going to grow and choke out the good plants. And then finally, Ah, the good soil. 
And so the lesson here that many pastors will preach, and you've heard from this pulpit before, is pray that God makes your heart the good soil. There's a, a hymn by a man named Hant Hansen, and it's this beautiful little prayer. Lord, make my heart good soil. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? Isn't that a prayer that we, in one way or another, pray all the time? Lord, make my heart good soil. So that's what we're hearing about in the second half of the reading today. All about wanting to be the one that has the good soil in our hearts, not the one that has the hard pack or the rocks or the thorns. And so typically you'll hear one message or the other for this reading on this weekend. But I don't want to pick one. I want to walk through those two together today and show how those two truths of God's Word fit together perfectly, as we would expect God's Word to do. We're not going to pick one. We're going to talk about both. And here's how those two words of God fit together. God gives us His Word. God gives us His sacrament that we are so blessed to be gathering around together today. And all of you who are watching online as well, not watching, excuse me, participating in worship together, you are also gathered around God's word with us. And he uses that word, that grace, that fellowship, to pulverize the rocks that grow just below the surface of our hearts, to yank those thorns out and throw them into the fire. He uses them to even to soften that hard-packed earth of the path. Even when our hearts are so hard that the seeds tend to bounce right off, his word again and again, pounding down on that path, can soften it and make it the good soil. But, and here's the connection, all that wouldn't matter. All that wouldn't matter if it weren't for the fact that we have a generous and gracious and merciful and loving God who continually throws his seeds of grace and hope and forgiveness and new life onto that soil, no matter what condition it's in in our hearts. It wouldn't matter one bit if it weren't for the sower who so recklessly, radically throws those valuable gifts into our lives again and again, never giving up, but coming around and coming around. Each time we hear his word, each time we hear the words of forgiveness in the absolution, each time we receive the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, we have that sower walking through and scattering that seed again and again. And sometimes it doesn't do anything. Sometimes our hearts are hard. Sometimes the things of this world, perhaps a pandemic and all the costs associated with it, harden our hearts or create so many distractions like the thorns that the seed never has a chance. But that's okay. Jesus comes around again, and he comes around again. And sometimes he does it through us. Sometimes he does it, many times he does it through his people who are inhabited by the Holy Spirit, who speak the words of life that God has given through his word as well. And again and again, the seed strikes that soil and prepares it to receive the grace and the hope of the gospel. This is where that word comes in. Enough. There is enough. We need to hear that. That we are enough. That God is enough. That there is enough. Because our culture gives us the opposite message. Think about advertisers and the culture that we are permeated with advertising. There's never enough. Even if you have enough, it's not the right enough, because we have a new enough. According to the commercials that I see and hear, that I encounter in every place that I turn, I don't have enough. There's always something a little bit better that I need to get. And let me tell you, I am the one who clicks through on Facebook. Oh, that looks interesting. And I follow that rabbit hole until I know it's God intervening and shaking my head and saying, get back on task. But I have been victimized, and maybe you have too, 
with the feeling that comes from, oh, I need that. Oh, I didn't realize that my life was lacking, but I guess it is. And the message from politicians too, that what security you have is not enough. But if they're elected, then they promise to provide that protection and security and safety that you're lacking right now. And so it goes in an endless cycle. To the point where perhaps we start to feel like not just we don't have enough, that we are not enough. Have you ever felt that way? Because a third way it can happen is just in this fallen sinful world when things come up. And this pandemic has come up. And I don't know about you, but many times I felt like, I don't know if I can deal with this. Not just the change of life, not just the change in the way the whole world looks and operates, but the time as it goes on and on. Now I know, based on history, that eventually I'll be able to look at all of you and you won't have masks on. And you'll be closer together. I know that eventually we'll be past this. I know that. But what I feel is, can I do this another week? Can I do this another month? Can I do this for another year? And that's just one example of what the world does to make us feel like we're not enough. When challenges arise in our lives, whether they're little or big, whether there's a few or there's several, we start to question whether we are up for that task, whether we are enough. So we never have enough stuff. We're never safe or secure enough. We're not enough. This is what the world does to us. It has fallen us. And then, praise the Lord, here he comes with this big bag of forgiveness and life and hope. He's not worried about whether there's going to be enough seed. He's not going to be very careful to find just the hearts that are ready to receive it. He scatters it with a generosity, with a radical love that we can't even imagine. You get the feeling that he would throw it on the parking lot, just in case one might fall into a crack and find a spot. And all of us know, those of us with driveways that have cracks in it, that seeds can find a place to grow and sprout, even in a parking lot. But he has an infinite amount of seed, an infinite amount of grace. And so, with this generosity we can't imagine, he scatters and throws that seed again and again. Forgiveness, life, love. He wants our hearts to be ready to receive that seed. He wants them to be good soil. But nevertheless, he'll continue to throw ridiculous amounts of seed on the dry ground, the thorny ground, the rocky ground, the hard-packed earth. Mercy, hope, peace going everywhere. And he can do that because he is enough. Because through his radical love and sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us, for our sins, to rise again and conquer death for us, to ascend with the promise that he will return to take us home to be with him. He has shown that he will never run out of invitations to his kingdom. And each seed he throws is exactly that, an invitation to come. Come, join the kingdom. Be a part of an eternity in God's presence. Walk away from the sin of this world because of my grace and mercy and come and dwell in the kingdom now, as we are right now, whether we're here or online, dwell in his kingdom while on this earth, and then dwell in eternity as well. And why does he do that? Why does he use that eternal supply of grace, of invitations, in a world that he knows is fallen and messed up? Because God looks at each one of you and he says, you are enough, just as you are. You are enough. Enough to save yourselves? No, absolutely not. Enough because of what Christ has done to save you? Yes, absolutely. 
He looks at each one of us, sees Christ on the cross, sees the empty tomb, sees Christ and says, you are enough and I have enough. And this is going to work. And I'm not going to give up because I want each and every one of you to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God loves us just as we are because of Christ and therefore regards us as worthy, worthy to be showered with grace again and again. Now, loving us as we are doesn't mean that he's satisfied with where we are. He's not content with where we are. Because God loves us so much, he wants us to discover that abundant life of trust and hope and love, steered toward him alone, which signifies the good soil and the way that soil could grow and sprout and bear fruit 30 and 60 and 90 times. Because God loves us so much, he wants us to understand the abundant life of service to each other. He desires for our hearts to be good soil so that the fruit we bear blesses those around us and strengthens those around us and prepares by his grace their hearts to be good soil as well. Because God loves us, he wants all of us to stand up against the fear and scarcity that drive terrible things in this culture like prejudice and racism and greed and violence. Because God loves us, he wants us to strive for equality and dignity for all people. Because all their hearts, no matter what condition they're in, can be made good soil by the grace of God. Because God loves us, he wants us to share what we have generously so all will have basic things like food and shelter. He wants us to take care of one another. If that means masks and hand washing and some distance for right now, well, that's okay. We can do that. That's what we will do out of love for our neighbors. Even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's hot, even when it's really, really annoying, we'll do that because the abundant life of God says, love one another. And that in itself is scattering seeds. By the way, that's a trick that I use to convince myself (laughs) to wear a mask when I go into a store or any other place where, boy, you really don't feel like wearing a mask. Just think of yourself as sharing the seeds of God's love and hope as you wear that mask among other people. Because God loves us, he wants us to grow to the people that he knows we can be. He wants our hearts to become better and better soil, richer and deeper and more productive. And so he takes care to tend that soil, to soften it, to break up the stones, to pull out the thorns again and again and again. But the fundamental element, the unifying element of all of God's hope for us is that they all come from this unconditional, reckless love and acceptance that God has for us right here, right now, just as we are. There's enough. There's always enough with God. You are enough. God will never give up on us until the very end of the age. God's love, it's unending, just as his kingdom is. And so as Jesus says, they who have ears, let them hear. In his name, amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing.